بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continuing on in our study of the methodology of the Salaf al-Saleh and the Ummah's need for it, a lecture given by Sheikh Saleh bin Fuzan, Hafizullah Ta'ala. And we left off where the Sheikh said, speaking about, after speaking about the importance of following the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, he was discussing about the importance of Surah Al-Fatiha or the ayat in Surah Al-Fatiha where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ihdina Surah Al-Mustaqeem, guide us to the straight path that we have to always ask and supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and ikhlas with the battle of Sunnah and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sincerity and firmness to remain on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because in fact that is a ni'mah azima and much of the creation most of the creation is not favored in that way in fact many of the Muslims are not favored with following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by understanding the religion properly and having sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their worship and may Allah bless us to be of those people ameen ya rabbil alameen so he said, it is because of this Allah made it mandatory that we recite Surah Al-Fatiha in every unit of prayer, whether this prayer is mandatory or optional. There is a tremendous supplication toward the end of the Surah, Ihdina Surah Al-Mustaqeem, guide us to the straight path. It is a straight path because indeed there are other paths which are deviant and deceiving. Thus the person asks Allah to protect him from these deviant paths, and he asks that he be guided to the straight path. This means that one requests to be guided to the straight path and that he remains firm upon it, as we said, as Salallahu with the bad I mean. He makes this supplication in every unit of prayer because of its extreme importance. Notice its meaning, Surat al Mustaqim, the straight path. Who are those who traverse upon the straight path? They are those whom Allah has blessed. The path of those whom you have blessed. Who are those whom are blessed? As the Imam said. Of the Prophets. The Siddiqun, meaning the followers of the prophets who were first and foremost to believe in them. The martyrs and the righteous and how excellent these companions are. And may Allah bless us to be from amongst them. Amin, ya Rabbil Alameen. Then the Shaykh said, if you asked Allah to guide you to this path, this indicates that you have requested to be protected from the deviant paths and those that have gone astray. The path of those whom you have blessed, not of those who earned your anger, nor those who went astray. Not the path of those who earned your anger. Those who Allah is angry with are the Jews. They are those who knew the truth but they did not act upon it. The anger of Allah is also upon those who traverse the path of the Jews from this nation. Thus, everyone who knows the truth but does not act accordingly is upon the path of the Jews, the path of those whom Allah is angry with due to him not implementing his knowledge of the truth. This person has in fact taken the knowledge but abandoned the actions and thus, every person who has knowledge but does not act upon it incurs the wrath or the anger of Allah وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَلَلْضَالِينَ Nor those who went astray. These are the people who worship Allah upon ignorance and deviation. They worship Him and seek nearness to Him, but in a manner that is not legislated and by a way by way of an incorrect path. They are upon innovation without proofs from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet. The Prophet said, 
wa kulla bid'atin dalala. Every innovation is a de deviation. This is what the Christians are upon. And likewise, every person who adopts their path, everyone who worships Allah in a manner that is not legislated and correct, everyone who worships Allah in a manner that is not legislated and correct is astray and his actions are void. This, meaning the supplication at the end of Surah Al-Fatiha, is a comprehensive supplication, which we repeat in every unit of prayer. We must reflect over the meaning of this supplication and use it by supplicating with, with conscious hearts. We likewise must know its meaning so that our supplication will be answered. After reciting the Surah, we say, Amin. The meaning of Amin is, O oh Allah, answer our call. O oh Allah, answer our call. Thus, this is a tremendous supplication for the person who contemplates and reflects. As we have previously mentioned, the person who traverses the path of those who have been blessed will be tested. He will be confronted with restriction. He will be belittled, called a deviant, and threatened. And thus, he needs to be patient. It is for this reason, narrations have mentioned that the individual who adheres to his religion during the latter days will be similar to the one holding on to a hot coal. This is because he will be confronted with trials and harm. He will receive harm by way of the people. Consequently, he must be patient, just as the person who holds hot coal. This path will not be a bed of roses, as they describe it. Rather, it has many harms and difficulties. This path has harm by way of the people, so you must be patient and firm upon it until you meet your Lord, the mighty and high, while you are still upon it. This must be done in order that you may be saved from the hellfire. You will be saved from deviation in this life and saved from the hellfire in the next. This, there is no path to salvation except this path. And there is no salvation except for the one who traverses it. And that's the path we want, the Sirat al-Mustaqeem. This is the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated for us and that we have to strive our best to follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and the methodology, the madhab, the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah. That's our salvation, ahabitifillah. Then the Shaykh mentioned, he said, a warning against forsaking the path of the salaf. Meaning, this is a warning to... Avoid deviating from the path and the methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah. The Sheikh said, now you find people forsaking the methodology of the Salaf. They present this in newspapers, magazines, and in books. They belittle Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the true Salafiyun. They belittle and disparage them. They accuse them of being extreme. They accuse them of declaring Muslims to be disbelievers, etc. Their claims will not harm, rather they will only harm the person who does not have patience and strong commitment. Their claims can possibly harm this individual. SubhanAllah. That is a great faida from Imam uh, Salih bin Fawzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, which helps us in our Iman to stay firm on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Minhaj of the Salaf of Ummah, because by Allah, there are so many tests, there are so many academic journals from the non Muslims and the Muslims uh, criticizing the Salafiyun, criticizing Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah, trying to cause shuk and doubt in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, trying to cause doubt in Ahlul Hadith and the methodology of Ahlul Hadith and the fuqaha of, of, of Islam and the menhaj of the salaf of this ummah. There are so many that criticize and attack and avoid and attempt to harm Ahl Sunnah from every angle within the religion and outside the religion. And may Allah bless us with ikhlas with the battle of Sunnah to Nabi. Sallallahu alayhi wa The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق حتى لا حتى حتى يأتيهم أمر الله وهم على ذلك وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in another narration لا يضرهم من خالفهم ولا من خذلهم حتى تكون الساعة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said there won't cease to be a group from my nation that is on the truth until uh, and no one will harm them. And no who who differs with them 
until the day of judgment. Letting us know that Ahlul Sunnah mojud and Ahlul Sunnah will continue to be in existence until the last days. That there will always be those adhering to Kitabi Law Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's up to us to find them, to, to, to seek companionship with them, to seek knowledge from them, because they are the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah. They are the ulama on the minhaj of the Salaf of this Ummah, not on the tariqah Naqshabandi, not on the tariqah uh, uh, Brailawi, not on the tariqah uh, Tijaniya or, the, or, or Qadariya or any of these other uh, paths. But instead, they are those who adhere to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as our Shaykh, Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi'i, Allah Yarhamahu, as he said in his treatise when he was referring to the Dawah to Salafiyya, Dawah to Ahl Sunnah to Al Jama'ah, he said, Dawah to Ahl Sunnah, uh, Dawah to Ahl Sunnah, here, Dawah to Ila Kitab Allah, Min Kitab Allah, Wa Ila Sunnah to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ila Sunnah to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. He said that. The da'wah of Ahl Sunnah, it is the da'wah from the book of Allah to the book of Allah. From the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That this is the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah. It's not a da'wah to ourselves. It's not a da'wah to our brothers. It's not a da'wah to uh, our ulama. But we want guidance for ourselves and guidance for the people, guidance for the Muslim to come back to the pure, the purity of Islam. Islam in its pristine form. We believe in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we have to try our best to implement it in our lives. And we have to try our best to call to it. And we have to try our best to adhere to it. And we have to try our best to tamasik be. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnatu khulafa rashidin al mahdeen It's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifat. And he said, cling to it. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَإِن فَإِنَّكُمْ مِنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِي فَزِيَرَ أَخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرٍ فَعَلِيكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ خُلَفَاءَ رَشِدِينَ The Prophet ﷺ said, "Those who live long after me, that they will see many differences." And then he gave the prescription. So it's upon you, my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifat. This is what we strive our best to adhere to. And the Prophet ﷺ said, "If تَرَكَتْ الْيَهُودَ لَأَتَوَ سَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةً." وَإِفْتَرَكَتْ النَّصَارَ لَأَتَنَتَيْنَ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةً وَسَتَفْتَرِكُ هَذِي أُمَّةَ عَلَى ثَلَاثَ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةً كُلَّهَا فِي النَّارِ إلَّا وَاحِدَةً كُلَّ مَنْ يَهِيَ مَنْ هِيَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قَالَ مَنْ كَانَ عَلَى مِثْلِ مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, the Jews will break into seventy-one sects, the Christians into seventy-two sects, and my ummah into my nation into seventy-three sects, all of them in the fire except one. He said, and then they said, who are they, يا رسول الله? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. This is what we have to strive our best. And it's not simply a claim, a false claim, as some of the people understand it to be. To say that it's sufficient to say I'm Salafi. It's sufficient to say I'm from Ahl Sunnah. No, it's only sufficient to practice those principles. And to be upon that in reality. This is why the ulama of Islam, the fuqaha, they mention a qa'ida, a very important principle, that the proof of something is in its uh, substance or in its reality, not in its, uh, not in its claim. So it's not sufficient to claim that you're Salafi or to claim that you're from Ahl Sunnah and not practice those principles and not understand those principles and not adhere to the Madhab or the Minhaj of the Salafa Salaf Salih, radiAllahu taalaan majmaeen. Then the Sheikh said, there are vindu, there are individuals who say, who are the Salaf? They claim that they are just a group like the other groups. They are merely a party like the other parties. And they do not have any distinction. This is what some people say about the Salaf. They claim that the Salaf are only another group and party like the rest of the groups and parties. These people actually intend to divert us from the methodology of the Salaf. There are others who say we are not, obliged, uh, we are not obliged to adhere to the understanding and the knowledge of the Salaf. We do not have to follow their way. Rather, we should make our own way. We should d deduct new rulings and we should create new understanding. The way of the Salaf is old. Their understanding was for their time and it is not befitting for our time as our time is diverse. 
For this reason, these individuals abandon the understanding of the Salaf, and they propagate a new understanding. This affair is very prevalent in newspapers and magazines who are authored by the people of deviation. And isn't this what we hear some of the callers in America and in the West saying? This very same thing, the same Ibarat or these Ibarat, these statements, which are very, very similar to those same statements, that the, the path of the Salaf is too old, it's outdated, we're looking forward while the others are looking backward. All of these kind of titles for their lectures and so forth. This is what some of the people are calling to. Instead of calling the Kitab Allah wa Sunnah al Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. And then the Shaykh said, Allah Ta'ala, they want to divert us from the methodology of the Salaf. This is because if we do not know the methodology of the Salaf, we would abandon it and not study it. It is not sufficient that one ascribes to the Salaf without knowledge and without understanding their way. This is what the deviants want. They want you to forsake the way of the Salaf, their understanding and their knowledge, and instead invent new understandings that are befitting for the present time, according to their claim. This statement is a lie. The Islamic legislation is applicable to every time and place on until the day of judgment. The methodology of the Salaf is appropriate for every time and place. It is the light from Allah, the mighty and high. So do not be deceived by the speech of the deceiver and the deviant and do not allow them to divert you. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.